One of my favorite movies is the sci-fi romance Her, and one of my favorite things about Her is the imagined future Los Angeles that is building up rather than out. When the protagonist decides that he's going to go to the beach, he's able to get on a subway and easily get there, not some flying car nonsense. And there's something so exciting about a future and a place that is Los Angeles with an excellent public transit network. It's an amazing idea. Now, as it turns out, parts of the movie, including the subway bit, were actually shot in Shanghai, which is the type of city with a transit network that LA should aspire to. Fortunately, while LA doesn't have a subway to the sea under construction quite yet, it does have a lot of plans and projects being built right now. And when all of these projects are completed, the system will be long enough to give New York a run for its money. Los Angeles is undertaking a generational effort to create the largest transit expansion in America, and probably in American history. So what's happening? What challenges does this scheme face? And why do I think that no matter what happens, it will change Los Angeles forever? Let's talk about it. Hey there, I'm Reese, and I run RM Transit, a channel about the world's great and growing transit networks. LA is well known for being a traffic-choked city, but what you probably didn't know is that with the new regional connector and the K-Line light rail, Los Angeles actually has the second longest light rail network in America, after Dallas, and it's by a tiny margin, like one mile. That means LA's gonna have the biggest light rail system in the country in probably just a few years. LA is building a lot, and both of the projects I just mentioned were opened in the last year or so. And there's a number of other major projects under construction, including an extension of the D-Line subway along Wilshire Boulevard and the new People Mover connecting to Los Angeles International Airport. The extension of the D-Line is deeply underrated because the Wilshire Corridor is actually really dense and already hosts a lot of well-used transit service. When the extension finally opens, a lot of major destinations in LA will be accessible by rail, including Beverly Hills, UCLA, Westwood, and Century City. And that's not to mention fantastic museums like the LA County Museum of Art and the Academy Museum of Motion Picture. Even better, LA might finally be able to throw off its reputation as having terrible subway headways, because it's both building a better turnback facility that should allow it to run more frequency on the east end of the current network, and it's also getting new trains to run more service with. That turnback facility in particular is just so underrated because it will actually have a huge impact on how people experience subway service in LA while not being all that visually notable. The new transit to LAX includes a people mover to the various terminals as well as a big new transit center on the K line that will feature tons of bus bays for bus services as well as platforms for the K and C lines to serve LAX. That will allow people arriving at LAX from cities around the world that often have rail to the airport to get on the people mover, get to the rail station and travel east, north or south all on light rail transit. These projects should both be done for the 2028 LA Olympics, and I can't help but say I'm excited to see tons of press descend on the city to realize it actually has significantly improved public transit that's way better than most people expect. I actually think people underappreciate the ability for an Olympics to elevate the profile of a city, and while LA has a high profile, it's for its car culture and for Hollywood, and not for all of the massive infrastructure investments it's making. When tons of reporters descend on the city, they'll make stuff about the city itself, not just the Olympics, they always do, and they'll have a lot of that new infrastructure to mention and talk about. And it's not just about some performative, look at what we have. The congestion and road closures around Olympic Games mean visitors and locals alike tend to get on transit in big numbers. And the impacts of that can be huge. When Vancouver hosted the 2010 Olympic Games, there were a number of SkyTrain ridership records set, and the games really showed just how far the system could be pushed. But it's even better than that. After the games, ridership stayed higher than it was before, because people got out, tried the system, and realized it was a good way to get around. They were converted to transit, at least for a lot of trips. LA should be gunning for the exact same thing in 2028. And to be clear, there are a lot more projects going on. A new subway under the Sepulveda Pass will connect the San Fernando Valley to UCLA, as well as the extended D-Line, and in the future, probably also LAX. There's also a new people mover in Inglewood moving forward, which is known creatively as the Inglewood People Mover, which will connect SoFi Stadium and a lot of other major event venues to the K-Line, which is likely to seriously help ridership on that line, and also just reduce the degree to which the experience of using these car-centric stadiums is really horrible. 
At the same time, the new Foothills extension of the A line will take the world's longest light rail line and make it even longer, creating new regional connections to the metro network, including to regional trains, which I'm going to touch on in a minute. A northern extension of the K-Line will add more subway-style rapid transit to central parts of LA, creating a bit more of a subway grid in the center, while a southern extension will connect even more destinations to the network. There will also probably be an eastern extension of the C-Line and new light rail lines connecting LA Union Station to Santa Ana and the San Fernando Valley, as well as the likely eventual conversion of the G-Line in the San Fernando Valley to light rail from its current very nice, but not rail buses. And on top of all of that, LA's regional rail operator Metrolink, who historically hasn't been amazing, has finally got serious about providing high quality regional service to the region, which will look like all day bi-directional service on basically every line, as opposed to today's rather inconsistent service as part of its SCORE program. The SCORE program will actually mean pretty frequent regional train services for central parts of LA, think every 15 minutes or so, and hourly services to the more far-flung reaches of the network. Even better, as part of the Redlands Rail Service, LA has been dabbling with diesel and hydrogen multiple unit trains from Stadler, which could easily give LA the nicest regional trains of any network in the Americas if they were to be deployed widely across it. And frankly, this is just scratching the surface of everything going on in the LA region. And of course, if you want to learn more, the best place to go is to Nandert's channel, who periodically creates documentary length and quality explainers of the state of various LA transit projects, including a lot of their challenges, such as remarkable levels of nimbyism and really high costs. But the good thing is that since LA actually has a multi-decade pipeline of projects that it's planning to build and the funding to build them, LA actually has a real chance to solve its cost problems. Now, regular disclaimer, LA's transit expansion is not perfect, far from it. But the reality of being an urbanist or transit lover in North America is that you have to take the wins when you can. It's often two steps forward and one step back, and no project is perfect. But every project is also a hard-fought win, and the amount of progress being made is astounding. Of course, it's important to still criticize projects and agencies, because they can and should be getting better with every single project. But it's also good to sometimes just step back and say, holy crap, LA is building a lot of transit projects. And while I don't always think it will be a smooth ride, I think the transit being built will fundamentally change LA. It's inevitable. For one, the system is just getting way bigger. People who are taking buses today are going to have new rail options in the future. And that will make rides faster and more comfortable, which will attract more use, make transit more competitive, and free up buses for more service on routes that still exist. To some extent, I also think people just underrate the value of opening a new transit project every couple of years. It keeps transit in the media in a positive light and keeps reminding the public, hey, we're here, you can ride transit, it's better than driving. Giving people a lot of reasons to try transit is just a good thing for actually getting people on transit and then having them realize, hey, this is actually pretty great. It's also kind of hilarious, but also fantastic that LA is basically piece by piece reassembling the Pacific Electric, but built to modern standards with light rail instead of streetcar tram vehicles. But what that also means is that a lot of great old streetcar suburbs, which Ray from City Nerd talked about in this video, are going to be reconnected to the transit that made them great in the first place. And that's really exciting. I also think that LA, given its huge size, cost of living, and sprawling nature, is also just kind of a natural transit city. I mean, most big cities are transit cities, and the reality is that given LA's size, there's just obviously a lot of latent demand for better transportation options in the region. You also have to remember that each new project, line, extension, station, adds to the existing network. It doesn't just increase the reach to one part of the network, but it makes the trips possible across the network so much larger. That means even projects or lines that don't move a ton of people from day one have potential to become massively useful in the future as part of a broader network. I also really think that a lot more connections between LA's various urban nodes instead of everything traveling into Union Station and downtown LA will massively expand the amount of transit trips people can easily make. LA isn't just sprawling, but very polycentric, and people often want to travel across the city just as much as they want to travel into it. That being said, LA Union Station is going to be superbly well connected, and if the region were to have a center, this should be it. The station will have two subway lines, two light rail lines, multiple BRT services, and tons of regional and long distance trains in the not so distant future, and that makes it incredibly well connected. 
the area around LA Union Station should have way more density. But what's exciting is that there are going to be a ton of different hubs and interchange points created all around Los Angeles. For example, that one I mentioned at LAX between the K-Line and the LAX People Mover. That's actually going to be really well connected. Fortunately, I think the density will come. LA in general has a lot of transit now. And these days, every time I look at downtown LA on Google Earth, I'm impressed when some more of those transit seeds we've sown sprout into new high-rise towers. Over the next few decades, LA should have a slew of regional rail and BRT lines, at least three subway lines, six to seven light rail lines, as well as a bunch of people movers. And I hope, and I know that this is going to change the degree to which LA is the car dependent city we know today. That will mean a city that's denser, greener, healthier, and better connected. And that will mean a better LA and a better US. Thanks for watching.